Can you enhance the fire resistance rating of a mass timber member or assembly through the use of direct applied gypsum wallboard? Seems like a simple question and you probably think the answer is yes. In most cases, that's true. However, there certainly are some code nuances to navigate when looking at using this option. Today's video is going to break down the options, look at the code provisions, and give you some practical detailing options for designing gypsum clad mass timber members. Well, hey folks, welcome back to another Timber Talk Tuesday. I'm Ricky McLean with Woodworks. When designing mass timber buildings, in most cases you want to expose the mass timber within the building to the maximum extent possible. However, there are certain applications, whether due to design restrictions, project specific circumstances, or other requirements, which would either require or desire the direct application of gypsum wallboard to the mass timber members. If we are doing this, it might make a lot of sense and in some cases be necessary to use that direct applied gypsum wallboard to enhance the fire resistance rating of the timber members. So how do you do this? How do you do this from a code perspective? Well, as you might expect, a lot of this discussion comes down to the construction type within the International Building Code, understanding the options there. There have been some code changes along the way in the 2021 IBC in particular that recognize some new options. So today's video is gonna break down those options, but first maybe let's give you a few examples of when something like this might be necessary. Let's say you're working on a multifamily project and you're gonna use mass timber floor panels. Now. You know that in the end condition, all of the mass timber floor panels on the ceiling side are going to be protected with gypsum wallboard materials. So maybe you're just using mass timber in that case to aid the speed of construction and the light weight of the structure. Now, if this is the case, it makes the most sense to minimize the volume of wood used, not rely on that wood as the inherent fire resistance rating, and therefore go to a thinner timber panel, assuming again that it works for the structural loads and spans. So let's say you're going to use a three ply, roughly four inch thick CLT floor panel in this multifamily building, but you generally still will have to get at least a one hour fire resistance rating and the three ply panel in and of itself is not adequate to get you there. So this is where the application of direct applied gypsum wallboard to the underside of that three ply CLT panel could help us achieve that one hour fire resistance rating. Now another example, let's say we're working on a type 5A office building. And we know that the tenant of the building wants to use some column box outs to conceal electrical wiring that's going to be attached to outlets in the columns or perhaps we're running roof drain lines down the face of the column. So we're going to have box outs and therefore we're going to have directly applied chips and wallboard on the timber columns. Now in that case, again, it probably makes the most sense to minimize the timber volume and fiber by designing those columns structurally for what they need for axial loads while not oversizing them to get the one hour fire resistance rating. So we're gonna use the gypsum wallboard to enhance the fire resistance rating of the timber column in this example. For our third example, let's say we're framing a floor with traditional eye joist for floor framing construction. Now those eye joists span to a glue lamb beam that is deeper than the eye joist. So that beam extends down below the ceiling plane that is on either side of it, which is directly applied to the underside of those eye joists. Now in the situation where this assembly and beam requires a one hour fire resistance rating, we're achieving that rating of the assembly through its direct applied ceiling. But because the beam extends down below the joists, we're still gonna have to demonstrate a one hour fire resistance rating for that beam. So wrapping the section of the beam that extends down below the ceiling could be a valid way of demonstrating the fire resistance rating of the beam, which probably qualifies as a primary structural frame member. So these are some common examples of when you might want or need to have direct applied gypsum wallboard to a mass timber member or assembly. But this then begs the question, how do you actually do it? How do you demonstrate this from a fire resistance rating perspective? Now, from a code perspective, the thing to keep in mind in terms of fire resistance ratings is that there are a number of options that the building code gives us to demonstrate the fire resistance rating of a given member or assembly. We turn to section 703.3 of IBC, and this lists out a number of options. And all of these are based on or use the principles of the standard fire time temperature curve that is associated with the ASTM E119 fire test standard. Now within these options, you'll see things like documented fire tested assemblies through approved sources, 
calculations based on Section 722 of IBC, or an engineering analysis that uses the data from an actual fire test to draw parallels. Now, one of the options mentioned there as a valid way of demonstrating the fire resistance rating of an assembly is through actually citing the test reports from a fire test, an E119 fire test. Now, Woodworks has compiled over 50 mass timber E119 fire tested assemblies for floor, roof, and wall applications. So if we're looking at, say, that first example we talked about of a three-ply CLT floor panel with direct applied gypsum wallboard to the ceiling, we could turn to this inventory of fire tested assemblies and see that there actually is an option within this inventory for such a condition. So that could be the basis that we're using to demonstrate for this project how it meets the code requirements for demonstrating a fire resistance rating of a mass timber panel with direct applied gypsum wallboard. Now, if we're not going that design route for some reason, or perhaps it's a different application, a different situation, and we need to come up with a different means of demonstrating the validity of this approach for fire resistance, that generally pushes us over to the calculation or engineering based options. And those reference section 722 of IBC. Now, within section 722.6 of IBC, there is a prescriptive design-based approach, often referred to as the CAM method, component additive method. And within this section, which is generally used for light frame wood assemblies, not mass timber assemblies, but within this design approach, it does provide a way of calculating up to a one hour fire resistance rating for assemblies by adding up the times assigned to each of the individual components. So for example, if we turn to this section 722.6, we will see that each layer of 5.8 type X gypsum wallboard achieves 40 minutes of fire resistance ratings. And then you can also see time assigned to things like wood studs, wood joists, insulation, etc. So again, if we're using this approach to try to demonstrate the validity of adding gypsum wallboard directly to a mass timber assembly, we need to understand that as written, 722.6 is more applicable to a joist or stud assembly and not to a solid timber assembly. It could be a valid approach, but certainly something that you wanna talk with your building official about in terms of their acceptance of using, in this case, say 40 minutes for each layer of 5.8 type X gypsum wallboard if you're directly applying that to your mass timber member or assembly and relying on that solely as the means of demonstrating the fire resistance rating of that member or assembly. Now, staying on the topic of IBC 722 for a second, one notable change that has occurred starting with the 2021 version of the International Building Code is the addition of section 722.7. Now, this section is specific to the three new construction types introduced in the 2021 IBC, the tall mass timber construction types, 4A, 4B, and 4C. And what this new section is recognizing for the first time prescriptively in IBC is this option of getting a net fire resistance rating of a gypsum clad mass timber member by adding up the times assigned to those gypsum wallboard members. It's 40 minutes for each layer of 5 8 type X gypsum, 25 minutes for each layer of half inch type X gypsum, taking those values, adding them to the inherent fire resistance of the mass timber itself. Those two are summed to get a net fire resistance rating for that member or assembly. Again, this is notable because it's the first time that IBC has prescriptively recognized and allowed this type of adding of two materials together to get a net fire resistance rating, at least in the context of direct applied gypsum to mass timber members. And another document that I would recommend you check out on this topic is the American Wood Council's Fire Design Specification, specifically section 3.3.2.2, within this document talks through this specific application of using direct applied gypsum wallboard to wood assemblies to get a fire resistance rating. And similar to the IBC provisions, it also does recognize 40 minutes for each direct applied layer of 5.8 type X gypsum wallboard. Well, I hope the information in today's video was useful to you. This topic comes up sometimes in renovations of existing buildings, as well as in new construction and knowing what your options are for using just the timber or the timber plus direct applied gypsum wallboard, or in some cases, relying solely on the gypsum wallboard as the fire resistance means, even when it's directly applied to mass timber and heavy timber members are useful tools for you to have in your tool belt when evaluating what are the options that can get you the fire resistance rating that you need while minimizing the amount of materials and associated costs with getting that fire resistance rating. 
If you do have any questions on this topic, please do feel free to reach out to us here at Woodworks to discuss your project specific applications, challenges, and see how we can come up with a solution together. We provide free one-on-one -on -one project specific support. Well, that's it for today's video. I thank you so much for making it to the end. And until next time, we'll see you later. You better turn up. You better be there when I shake. Watch me rocking if I can't stop. Well, that's it for today's video. I thank you for so much. Now within these options, you'll think of a mass timber member or assembly through the, perhaps they're built boxing out to run things like roof drain plumbing. <clears throat> so for in the situation where a third example is, let's say we're taking those another useful resource that you might find of value to your project are useful tools for you to have in your toolbook